This is Stephen Reed from the University of Southern California. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to create a project within Emergent. Now when you've started the program, uh, this is what you'll first see. Uh, on the left you'll see a window that just says root and it'll list a couple of different things like docs, web, home, wizard, etc. Now once you develop the project you'll see that that's populated with a lot more stuff. In the middle uh, you currently see a link to the Emergent web page and on the bottom you'll see uh, something a window called CSS console uh, which gives various kinds of error messages and diagnost diagnostic messages from Emergent. Um, along the top you'll see the Emergent window, uh, Emergent menu rather, which you can go into preferences and change various characteristics of Emergent such as its looks, file where you can open uh, old projects or uh, start new ones, Edit, where you can do undo and redo. Uh, Emergent has both undo and redo capabilities as well as cut, copy, and duplicate. You can view uh, frames, toolbars, uh, and dock windows, uh, which you don't see yet. Uh, can show controls, you can stop and start a program, and various kinds of tools and windows. Okay, now to start a new project in Emergent, you can either click on this icon here or go up to File and say New Project. And it will then give you this dialog box that lists a number of different kinds of programs you can start. Now, there are, a lot of di there are other different architectures you can run in Emergent, but what we're going to talk about is Libra. And there are three different ways you can start Libra. One is Libra bank Blank, where you start from scratch. Libra standard where by default it creates just uh, a default network and Libra flex which allows you a tremendous amount of flexibility in building a network. Uh, right now we're going to start with Libra standard. If I dub double click on Libra standard it basically builds everything. So when I click Libra standard now this, what you'll suddenly see is in the left window uh, it'll see a tools window and it's very top it'll say control and say four for each things like that this is basically a window that has a library of all sorts of different programming elements if you actually want to program uh, a Libra project yourself or, or do or <clears throat> write programs to do things like data control or training or things like that Next over, you see a window. It starts at Libra Standard, and if you go down, you see Docs, Wizards. The Libra Wizard is a wizard for con uh, constructing different configurations of Libra networks. Edits, which is actually where you can have control panels. Data, uh, input data is the data you use, use to uh, train the network. Output data is data that you uh, actually record as the network is learning or when you're testing it. You can then also have various other kinds of data files such as analysis, data for analysis, etc. Then you see programs and what programs represents is all the different programs that uh, are used to train an emergent project. And you'll notice that it starts at batch, then goes to train, then goes to epic, then goes to trial etc. Now essentially batch allows you to you can think of batch as allowing you to test uh, various different individual networks and then what batch will do is it will call train and every time batch calls train you can think of it as training a different individual. Um, train then is basically responsible for going through a list of all the individual instances that the network is going to be exposed to during training. And basically what train does is it calls EPIC. EPIC is then responsible for going through a list of individual instances. EPIC then calls trial uh, for each individual instance and then trial calls the programs beneath it uh, in order to basically apply the instance to the network and then do training. You'll notice that these programs are listed in a hierarchy such that batch calls train, train calls epic, etc. Uh, one important thing to remember about Emergent, though, is that 
the order in the list doesn't actually control the order of execution. Each of those programs explicitly calls the program beneath it. So <clears throat> there's an actually there's an actual an explicit uh, calling structure here. Now underneath it, after you see the programs, you'll see viewers, and then you'll see networks is where you have all the information that defines the, the, both the um, structure of the network, which you'll find under layers, where it's you have layers, you have an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. Uh, you'll notice that those correspond to the input, hidden layer, and output layer over in this window over here. Um, you'll also see that under network there are specs, and each of these specs uh, are responsible for um, basically uh, representing different characteristics of the layers in the network, different characteristics of the nodes or neurons in the network, and different characteristics of the connections among uh, ne layers in the network. And then this projection spec basically tells you how the layers are wired up. Basically, are they fully connected? For example, are they fully connected or is there like a one-to-one -one connection um, in nodes in different layers? So this window represents everything about the basic structure of your emergent project. It basically tells you how the network basically tells you how the network is constructed and what are all the different elements. Programs controls essentially how the network is trained and learns. Data control basically contains all the data that's used to train the network. And output data actually records all the data that you're monitoring from the behavior of the network. Okay, the middle of this uh, screen will actually show you something called, uh, basically what it will show you is different sort of panels or dialog boxes that control different aspects of uh, <clears throat> Emergent. So for example, if I click on Libre Train over here, you will now see a window that tells me all the different parameters that I can adjust for the Libre Train program. So I can train, do things like control how much, it, how many epics it trains, um, what da input data do I use to train the network, etc. Um, and then if I also click on Epic, that changes. If I go down to Hidden Layer, I get a different dialog box that basically tells me about the characteristics of the hidden layer. And finally, uh, over on the right side, I get a window that basically gives me graphical information about the network. So in this particular case, I have a graphic representation of the network that basically says, here's an input layer with a 5x5, 5x5 nodes, 25 nodes, a hidden layer, 5x5 nodes, 25 nodes, and an output layer, 5x5 nodes. Um, you can manipulate characteristics of this display. This is zoom in and out. Vertical pan moves things up and down. Horizontal pan back and forth. Rotation, vertical rotation, etc. This uh, panel over here, where it says target, ext, etc., controls the uh, display of different elements in this network here. Uh, so if I click on ACT, it will show me the activation functions. If I show, uh, if I click on R.Wait, it will show me the weights uh, that go into that node, etc. Over here I have some other controls. So you'll notice that right now the default is this hand is selected and if I just move it like that, the network itself rotates. But I can't actually select anything. This red arrow, if I click on it, I can now select elements such as the layers. And once I select the layers, it now shows me a dialog box that tells me about the characteristics of that particular layer. You can also see the lines back here, and these are the projections or connections between the layers. And if I click on that, now I will get a line that gives me a dialog box that um, corresponds to the characteristics of that particular connection or that, that particular set of connections. <clears throat> now to go back over here, so the red arrow allows me to
click and select on things. This allows me to move things, the hand. This uh, is a home button that takes me back to the default position. This is a search light that allows me to search for different elements. This it allows me to take a picture. Actually, what this allows me to do is to set uh, a default. Um, and this allows me to print uh, pictures. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the basic structure of the network. Now, what I did here is I created a default network. And this default network actually, not only does it give me all the structure and the programs and things like that, but it also gives me a already existing data table. And in this data table, what I've already got is different elements that the program is going to learn. So, for example, it's supposed to learn, say, a mid-vertical line. And that's represented, this is a 5x5 five five matrix. You'll notice that there's a set of ones going vertically. And then the output is also a set of ones going vertically. Another set of lines, uh, I have a horizontal set of lines represented by a horizontal set of ones, and the output that, I, that the corresponding output is supposed to learn is also uh, a horizontal set of lines. And I can edit these things, so that says mid, mid vert, which strikes me that somebody is German, so I can change it to mid vert. I can also change the values, so instead of having the input here be a vertical line and this is a vertical line I could basically say okay we want um, something like this where it's basically a cross. I can also do things like say I want additional rows in this and it will create additional rows that I can fill in. I can also say well I don't want those rows and I can actually go up here rows and I can remove rows. So actually, I can. So I don't want to. So I want to start at uh, say start at row six. And then what I want to do is I want to remove the bottom two rows. Okay, and then they're gone. Okay, so this is a default network, and if I just so basically it's all set up to basically allow me to learn the relationship between uh, these vertical and diagonal lines. Um, so if that's what I want to do, uh, I'm all set.